Hi traders, I'm Luke from Discipline Trader. I just wanted to make a quick video to show you this new backtesting spreadsheet that I've made. I've called it uh, the Strategy Backtester. Um, I've had a few people ask me about a backtesting spreadsheet since I did the backtest series. So I've always had in the back of my mind that I wanted to make this spreadsheet. Um, this is following on obviously from the premium journals that I've made. They've been a great success. If you haven't seen them already, I recommend you check them out. Uh, you'll find a couple of videos on the channel about them and there's also more details on the website about that too. Uh, but what I'm going to do in this video is just run you through this new backtest spreadsheet. Now this spreadsheet is made to essentially test a strategy that you have already. There's not too much scope within this backtest spreadsheet to test variations of um, that particular strategy but what, what I'll do is I'll, I'll show you how that works as we go through it. Um, so the backtest strategy uh, the, the back tester spreadsheet is sort of spread over a few different tabs you can see here across the bottom. The first main one is this tab here, strategy rules. So the point of this is obviously just to specify what the strategy is that you are back testing. Um, if you've ever done any back testing and you come back to some of your spreadsheets, sometimes remembering exactly the permutations of the strategy that you've tested uh, can be tricky if you've not done a good job of noting it down. Uh, so obviously that's what this tab is for. So if you weren't going to test, say, three or four different variations of a particular strategy, you could run four versions of this spreadsheet and uh, within this strategy rules tab, you would need to detail exactly what that variation of that strategy looked like. So within this, we've obviously got general strategy rules like markets traded, the times you're going to trade and things like that, uh, entry rules, exit rules, stop loss rules and risk management rules. Now, this is here as a starting point for anybody that uses this spreadsheet. You don't have to stick with how this page looks. You can completely change everything within this uh, backtest spreadsheet to your heart's content. I just thought I'd make something that gives you a starting point and at least gives you pointers on what needs to be recorded um, so you know when you come back to these backtests exactly what you've recorded. So that's the strategy rules tab. So moving on to the backtest log, this is obviously the main hub of the strategy backtester spreadsheet. And essentially, all you need to do really within the spreadsheet after you've entered your strategy rules is just filling this log. Excuse me if you can hear sort of explosions outside for some reason there's fireworks. Um, but yeah, essentially all you need to do on this page is just complete um, a, a, a single row for each trade that you test. Um, so. Once you've entered your strategy rules, you'll know exactly what trades you're looking for. And as you find them, you can just enter them into this uh, backtest log. So this is quite well put together, even if I do say so myself, but there's quite a lot of checks within here. So it's difficult to sort of mess this up as you go through it. So I'll demonstrate it. So to enter a trade, let's say we're entering a trade on today's the date, today's date, which is the 11th. And then, so the formatting for this is date then time. So let's say it's 10 o'clock in the morning. You can then enter a market and this is done very similar to the premium journals in that you pick your the market that you want to select from a drop down menu. This is all explained how to configure this when you do purchase the, this, this backtest spreadsheet. Um, it's fairly simple, it's not, it's not complex. Uh, but let's say for example that we were testing the euro dollar. We would need to pick obviously what direction the trade is going. So let's say short in this case. And you can see there it's pre-populated these two cells well, one for a screenshot on one for a 1% trade size. Now, what I should have mentioned right at the start is that the, the first thing you need to do when you start using this trade log is just set a, a starting account balance. This can be anything you want. It really has no bearing on the backtest itself. It's there purely just from a, a monetary point of view. You can set this to something realistic that you would you would be trading, uh, you know, the account you would be trading. And then the risk per trade is just so that you can automate the risk that you're putting on the line for each trade. So if, if you're someone that likes to risk 1% on each trade, you can set this to 1% and then every trade that you enter will be sort of preset to 1%. And obviously you can trade this to, to anything you want. Uh, so for example, if we put 2% in there, then obviously that trade uh, changes to 2%. And you don't have to have this fixed. Obviously if, you, if there's particular setups where you've decided you're going to risk more on those, you can obviously manually override it as you go through the uh, backtest itself. Uh, but that's how that works. I'll just change that back to 1%. 
Um, so yeah, like I said, these two will pre-populate. Also, the, the trade number on the very far left-hand side, that will pre-populate for you as well. Um, I'll The screenshot pre-populates just so that you can add a screenshot at the start of the trade entry. This is just if you want to record screenshots for the for the trade entries, and there's, there's one for the trade exit as well on the far right side. Not everybody will want to do this, but I just thought I'd give the pe people the capability of doing it if you do want to do it. So that's the trade entry details. We then need to move on to the trade order details. So the good thing about this is you don't have to worry yourself about the monetary value of each trade. That's all taken care for you, care of in sort of in the back. Uh, all the formulas and things take care of that for you. You you only need to be bothered with the particular prices of the market. So say we were trading. Uh, let's change this to Bitcoin, BTC, and we were getting in at sixty-five thousand. Then our stop loss would need to be obviously if we're going long below this but if you've ever done any back testing like this it's a slip of the finger and it's easy to get these figures wrong so you can see if I put a, a stop loss in here that doesn't make any sense this will go yellow and it just suggests that you've either entered the wrong value or it's likely likely that you've put the trade direction the wrong way so obviously if we change this to short it will go away because that obviously makes sense now but if it was long we'll realize oh yeah sorry i meant to put 64,000 there a number that's lower than my entry obviously and the same works for the target so obviously if i enter a number that's lower than my entry point it will also flag those up for you so that's just a good check to make sure that as you're filling in the data you don't do it wrong essentially uh, so let's make this a target um that is correct so we'll go 66 500 67 and let's go 68 Oh, so there you go again, Mr. Zero, and it let me know. So I can add up to three targets for any ta uh, for any trades that I'm entering. Now, people might not have three targets in mind. That doesn't matter. The only three cells that you do need to complete on this bit is the entry price, the stop loss, and target one. As long as you give it those three cells, those three pieces of data, then the back test will work because obviously they're the minimum things that we need to know. But if people do want to test a secondary target and a third target, then you can do so. Now I've also built in the capability of testing a trail stop and this is, uh, is, is a good feature but you might not always need to write a value in here so I'll show you how this works. So say we were going to use a trail stop at, at this point um, and we've got certain rules for how that works, we won't know the value of that trail stop just yet because the, you will only need to write the value of the trail stop once it gets hit. So there's no point writing loads of different values for the trail stop because obviously it's constantly moving so the only value we are interested in is the one it actually gets hit at so for now we can leave it blank now moving on to trade performance details the first thing I ask you is the trade closed so if you are tr going through your data and this trade hasn't finished yet but you get another one set up so you'll need to start recording the next one you can just set this to no and all the formulas will carry on working um, it knows not to look for any sort of finished conclusional data on this trade and to just move on to the next one. Um, it stops the formulas breaking essentially if the trade hasn't closed. But once it has closed, you can click yes. Now this will flash yellow because what this is looking for is for the next six cells to add up to 100%. And what you do in these next six cells is you specify where your trade has been closed. So at which levels. So for example, if this trade, if say we got in at 65,000 and it came straight down to 64,000, 100% of our trade would be stopped out at the, the initial stop loss. So we can just write 100% in here because 100% of the trade was stopped out. You'll see the yellow check goes away because we've closed out 100% of this trade and that's it, that's it finished. We could enter the date that we completed the trade. Say this finished at 2.30 in the afternoon the screenshot will populate and that's done. That's a trade entry done. Now that might not be what happened. Uh, let's say that it made it to the first target and we took 50% off there and then it made it to the second target and we took 25% off there and then we made it to the third target and we closed the last 25%. Then again the check will go away and we know that we closed half of our trade at target one, a quarter at trade two and a quarter at target three. Um, so this just gives you the functionality to close different portions of the trade at different levels if you wish. You may just have a single target and it may be it either hits the stop loss, in which case it's 100% on the stop loss, or it hits your target, in which case it's 100% on target one. 
it's however you want to use it. I just wanted to build in as much as much functionality for people as possible. Uh, so the the trail stop, this is when this comes into play. So let's say that we made it to target one and we took 50% off. We made it to target two and we took our 25% off, but we didn't quite make it to, to target three and we'd moved our trail stop up to 66,750. That's wrong, typed that in the wrong position. Uh, so we need to type it here, 66,750. And now we can type in the amount of the trade that got closed at the trail stop. So 25% got stopped at this trail stop figure. Now you'll have noticed if I type 25% into this trail stop without a value in trail stop, this will flash red to say, hang on a minute, I don't know at what point this 25% was closed because I don't have a value. So again, that's just another check to say, hang on, something's gone wrong. So obviously once we enter our value in there, the spreadsheet goes, okay, I know at what portion, you, how much of this trade you've closed at what level. And then break even is self-explanatory. Um, obviously, if you're closing, say, the last portion of the trade at break even, you're just closing it at the entry price that you entered the trade at. Um, so for that portion, you make no money on that, essentially. And that's how the backtest works. So that's everything. That's all you need to do for each trade. Like I said before, you can add in another screenshot of the end of the trade if you want to, but that's all you need to do. You can just carry on working through uh, this backtest log, adding more and more trades, and that's all you need to do. All the results are taken uh, care of for you in the backtest results page, which we'll come to in a second. Now, you can obviously log different markets within here as well. I know a lot of people will probably just want to test one market, but you might do a market at a time, if that makes sense. So you might do sort of two years worth of backtesting on one market and then move on to another one. And basically you can either put them in separate journals because obviously you can have as many of these running as you want, or you can keep them all in the same journal. It's completely up to you. It just gives you the functionality of doing doing the backtest however you want to do it essentially. Uh, so moving on to the backtest results then, this is the page that will give you all the statistics about your findings, about all the data you've entered in that backtest log. So up in the top left corner, we've got overall statistics. And this just breaks down sort of the general data about the trades that we've entered. So you can see we've got the number of trades logged, the winning trades, losing and break even trades. We've got a trade win percentage. So this is just simply the number of trades that have won, percentage of trades that have won. We've got total profit and loss. Now this figure obviously comes from you setting an initial account balance, and then it will apply the 1% risk on each trade to all the trades that we've taken. And this will give you a total profit and loss here. So that's how it gets that figure. Uh, we've got a total uh, multiple return. So just under 20 hour returned on the trades that we've tested. Trade expectancy of 90 pounds and 53 pence. That means per trade we expect to make 90 pounds 53 on average. Uh, the average winning trade returns 1.34 R and the average losing trade loses 0.85 R, which means on average each trade is earning as 0.83 R based on the, the trades that we've tested. We've took 15 long trades and nine short with an average duration of two days, three hours and 12 minutes. So that's sort of just the general statistics around all the trade data that you've entered. The next box down lets you break down some of this data on a per market basis. So in this green cell, you can click the little drop down button and from the list of markets that you've entered, you can select whichever market you want to see. So for example, if we go to Apple, we can see we've not taken any trades on that market. If we go to Facebook, again, not taking any trades. Silver, we've taken two. Uh, Aussie, oops, Aussie US dollar, we've taken two and they've both lost. This just gives you the different metrics per market um, rather than all the trades combined. And again, this depends how you use the backtester spreadsheet, but if you've got different markets within your backtest log, then this is useful. If you're using a separate backtester spreadsheet per market, then it doesn't really matter. This feature probably won't be much use to you, but it's there if you do. And then the target, target breakdown at the bottom here, again, looks at all the data entered within that backtest log, and it will give you the hit rates for the different targets and trail stop. And it will also give you the average targeted R multiples for the targets and the trail stop. Now, like I say, this is for all the data that you've entered in here. But this works by looking at whether you've obviously entered a target value and then whether that target was hit. So for example, on this trade here, we've only entered one target. 
Um, so obviously this isn't going to count as a miss for target two and target three because they, they were never being targeted in the first place. It Those figures are obviously very accurate and um, it, it isn't confused by you not logging to target two, target three or trail stop. It will only count the times that you've used it. For example, you can see we've only used a trail stop once and we did take some money off there. We did close that there. So that will likely, yes, have a 100% hit rate. Uh, whereas if we added a trail stop on this trade and didn't uh, specify that we took any money off there, that will now drop to a 50% hit rate. So that's how that works. So obviously this will give you all the key metrics you need to know as to whether your strategy is profitable or not profitable, as well as other things, uh, other pieces of data that might allude to potential improvements that you could make. So moving over to the right hand side of this page, you can see we've got three big graphs. The first one is the account percentage growth. So this each point on this line just represents um, each trade. So you can see how each trade has an effect on the overall growth or decline of your account. Um, so obviously the, the trade data that we've entered so far has done quite well and we can see a, a steady growth line on this chart. Uh, the next one looks at the trade duration versus trade return. So basically each point on this chart shows you um, how long the trade lasted along the x-axis and then what that trade returned on the y-axis. So for example this one down here you can see it lasted 10 days and it lost 1% whereas this one over here lasted uh, 5 days and lost and made 0.88%. So this is a really good method of finding out whether there's any sort of correlation between the duration of your trades and the result of your trades. Now obviously looking at this data here we can't really see draw any major conclusions but you might find uh, with different strategies that the longer you hold the trade for example then the less likely it is to be a winning trade. Um, you never know and staring at data like this for example is going to make spotting that really difficult whereas looking at that data on a graph like this makes it much easier to spot so that's a potentially really helpful tool and then we've got the percentage return per trade and again this is very similar to the account percentage growth but this just details each trade and shows you essentially whether it won or lost green or red and then what that actually uh, what that trade actually returned um, as a percentage of the account. So you can see this one was a really good one up at 3.33% and then we've had a couple of 1% uh, losers and this one uh, was not quite 0.5%. So it's a good graphical representation of how your trades have performed. The next tab is the variables tab and this is uh, a really simple tab. There's not much that you need to know on here. This is just where you enter your markets. So you can see anything in this list is what will appear in the trade log on the drop down list here and in the back test results this is where you will, this is the list that you will pick these markets from. So if you need to add any markets to this list you can simply just add whatever market you want to be in here. So if we type the euro uh, yen for example we can add that in there and when we go back to our back test log and we scroll right to the bottom you can see euro yen has now been added to our list. Uh, and dead simply you can unprotect this spreadsheet and sort this by A to Z and it will put it back into alphabetical order for you and then when you go back to your backtest log this is now in alphabetical order and euro yen is in the E place and it's easy to find. So again very easy to use um, tab and that's really all you need to concern yourself with on this particular tab. This last tab yearly plan this is something I made a number of years ago. I didn't make this specifically for this backtest spreadsheet but when I came across it I thought it might be useful to anybody that uses this spreadsheet. So essentially this is like a five-year planner of what you might expect your strategy to do over a five-year period if you return the returns that you expect your strategy to return. I said return many times there. But for example let's say we carried out a back test and we found out that our strategy on average returns five percent a month brilliant i know but let's let's go with that so over on the right hand side i've made a target section for this plan and then over on the left hand side i've made an actual so the actual is more of a log and the target is obviously more of a, predi a prediction so on the prediction side you can set an initial capital you can set this to whatever you want it to be and then like i said if we found out that our strategy returns five percent we could enter 5% in here. And what this will do is it will return 5% on the initial capital for month on month for five years. 
and looking at the end of month capital figures, we can see what effect this will have on our account. So for example, starting with £10,000 at the start of year one, by the end of year one, if we return 5% every month, then we will just be at just short of 18,000. Now obviously this is compounding that 5% because 12 times five is 60, but you can see over here, this actually makes a 79.59% and that's because of compounding. Essentially, if you make 5% of 10,000 pounds and then make 5% on that 105%, essentially from, the, from your starting point, you're gonna be at more than just 12 times five. Uh, if you're new to compounding, check it out. I'll probably make a video on it in the near future, so subscribe. Um, but that's how that works. And it, what I've also done is add in the feature of um, allowing you to, to make withdrawals from this prediction um, plan as well. So we can do this quickly by setting a monthly drawing over here of say, let's say 250 pounds. So this would be assuming that we're gonna draw 250 pounds out of the account every month. And this will take it. This will take this into account. So you can see, the first month we start with ten thousand pounds. We make five percent. So our end of capital, uh, end of month capital is ten thousand five hundred. It's a monthly profit of five hundred. We've withdrawn two hundred and fifty. So our next month starting capital is ten thousand two hundred fifty, and on we go. And you can see what effect this has on the account growth if you're taking money out of it as well. So you can see by the end of the year, we're now at just over fourteen thousand rather than just under eighteen thousand without the drawings. Uh, you don't have to use this this cell here that applies it to the entire year. That's just there to as like an ease of use thing if you wanted to. to. You can just add it individually to, to certain months if you wanted to. You don't you can use it however you wish. And then on the left hand side it works exactly the same as it does with the planner except you can fill this out as you trade. So if you found a strategy using this spreadsheet that you actually want to use you can then use this plan uh, this log as you trade. So all you'd need to do is enter your initial capital that you're going to start trading with. The monthly return on capital target is not really important in this side of it. And as you can see, um, as I've detailed in this little cell, you only need to enter the end of month capital with, uh, on this actual side. So let's say after the first month we've taken our account to 10,250. That means we've returned 3%, it's a monthly profit of 250. And let's say, for argument's sake, we've not made any drawings. Uh, the next month, we go up to 10,650. That's a 4% return. And you can see the monthly profit. And then say we drop down to 10,500. We've lost 1% there. And so on. And this just allows you to log how your account is performing compared to what you thought it would do on the target side based on your findings from the back test. Um, so like I say, this information is not pertinent or important to the back test itself, but it could be a useful tool for you to plan forward having finished the back test and you are sort of inquisitive as to how this may affect your account in the long term. Because you should be thinking how, you know, what sort of returns am I going to make over a five year period? A trading strategy is not going to make you rich over a year or a few months. Um, you want to know what, what it's gonna do over the long term. And a five year period is a realistic term to look at. So that's the yearly planner. Uh, like I said, I've thrown it in there just in case it is useful to anybody that buys this spreadsheet. So that covers the strategy backtester spreadsheet. If you want to pick one of these up, you'll be able to buy this from the Discipline Trader website. It's disciplinetrader.co.uk. Once you're on the website, simply head over to the all courses section and you will find a card here for the strategy back tester. You can't see it at the moment because I've not published the course. Obviously I'm still doing all the videos in preparation for the release of it, but that's where you'll find it. It's going to be priced at $24.95 for anybody that wants to buy it. And included in that will be full access to the Discipline Trader community. So the Discipline Trader community is a community of traders that have been using either the premium journals or this strategy tester spreadsheet. And essentially all I do here is offer support for both these products if you need it. Uh, there's full tutorials on how to use these products. You can report bugs, ask questions, leave reviews, fire me questions, whatever you need to do. But essentially this community allows me to interact with anybody who uses these, these tools in a timely manner. Um, simply just using email can be uh, a little bit time consuming and because I get so many other emails as well, I don't want to miss 
um, anything. So this allows me to keep in touch with everybody that needs me to and using it for the premium journals for the past three or four months, however long we've been using it, has worked really well. Anybody who has questions can obviously refer to other people who have asked maybe similar questions and you can get your answers even quicker than, than simply sending me an email and me answering something that's already been answered, for example. As well as that, if there's anything that needs to be fixed or added to these tools, I can do so using the feedback from you guys within this community. I know the things that are bothering a lot of people because other people can sort of second what people have said. You know, you can like the comment and things like that or say, yeah, I agree in the discussions. Uh, it just makes providing support for these things a whole lot easier. So you'll get access to this community as well with the, with the purchase of either the premium journal or obviously the, the, the strategy tester spreadsheet. And uh, like I say, the, the support through this, this community platform has worked really well. Um, so yeah, that pretty much covers it. Like I say, if you want to find out more about the uh, spreadsheets, you can head over to the website and the, there will be details on the All Courses uh, page. Um, but other than that, this is the Backtester spreadsheet. I hope you really like it. Let me know what you think in the comments. Um, and thank you very much for watching the video. You will get a full tutorial playlist for this Backtester spreadsheet as well when you purchase it. It's worth mentioning. What I do in the tutorial playlist is run through each tab in specific detail and just tell you how to use it, particularly the backtest log, because obviously I want to make sure that you guys are getting this part right, as this is essentially the backbone of the backtest. Um, essentially, I've tried to make it as easy as possible to complete, and there are checks in there to stop you making mistakes, but the tutorial will walk you through that fully. And obviously, if you've got any questions once you've watched the tutorials, you can always contact me on the community site. So. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you like the strategy backtester spreadsheet and I'll see you next time.